Hello and welcome students. In the last video lecture, I had explained you question number 5 and question number 6 of chapter number 4 that is German. Okay, now in this video lecture, I am going to continue with the exercise question number 7 that is transactions for loan and interest that is on page number 103 of your textbook. Uh, transactions for loan and interest, it means in this sum, all the transactions, journal entry we have to write that are related to loan and interest on loan related transactions will be there in this sum. Students, whenever I am explaining or whenever you are referring the video lecture, see that your textbook should be there with you so that you can read each and every transaction and accordingly you can verify the journal entry in the video lecture. Okay, so easily you can understand the particular journal entry. Let us start with the question, write following transactions in the journal of Pushkar. As you can see on the board, already I have written the heading that is journal of Pushkar. I have already taught in the last video lecture how to give the heading and what would be the specimen of journal entries. So again revising the first column that would be of date, second particulars, LF number that is ledger folio number, then afterwards debit and credit. Also it has been discussed that always the debit and the credit value would be equal and the total at the end of all the entries that also would come equal. Okay. Now starting with the first entry that is February 2014. First date, due to additional requirement of funds, 12% loan of rupees 20,000 borrowed from RAM. Due to additional requirement of funds, 12% loan was borrowed. Okay, now due to requirement of more funds in the firm, additional loan was borrowed from one person that is RAM. Okay, so due to loan borrowing, the cash would come in the business. So the first entry you can see cash comes in. So as per the rule of real account debit what comes in. Because of loan borrowing the cash comes in. So cash account has been debited. So the general entry that would come cash account debit 20,000 to 12% RAM's loan account credit that is 20,000. Because RAM is the giver of loan. So as per the rule of personal account credit the giver. Okay. So the first general entry that is cash account debit 20,000 to 12% RAM's loan account credit 20,000. Uh, in here also I have not written the narration but students again I am repeating that narration is compulsory to be written after each and every general entry. Okay. So orally dictating what should be written as the narration that is being loan borrowed from RAM at a 12% rate of interest. You can write it in your own words always it should be starting with the word that is being. Okay. Next journal entry that is third date, rupees 8000 lent to Lakshman and interest rate of 8%. Now over here the loan is lent. Previously in the transaction the loan was borrowed. Over here we have lent the loan or we have given the loan to one person that is Lakshman. So due to giving of the loan, the cash goes out of the firm and who is the receiver of that loan that is Lakshman. So debit the receiver. Okay. So over here you can see I have written the second general entry that is 8% loan to Lakshman's account debit that is 8000 to cash account credit that is 8000 because cash goes out as per the rule of real account credit what goes out and as per the rule of personal account debit the receiver. So Lakshman is the receiver of the loan. So 8% loan to Lakshman account debit 8000 to cash account credit that is 8000. Students already have discussed in the date that every time you don't need to write the month and year. First, in the first transaction only you write the year and month and then afterwards you write just write the subsequent dates. Okay. So over here the second transaction what would come the narration being loan lent to Lakshman. In short only within one line you have to complete the narration. Next one that is eighth date. Received cash rupees 800 for loan lent to Bharat and rupees 200 for interest. Now, whatever the loan we had previously lent to Bharat, out of that loan, that person that is Bharat is returning back rupees 800 and rupees 200 for interest to the business, to the owner. Okay. So, we have to look from our point of view. So, that much amount of cash will be received to us. 
So you can see eighth date entry that I have written that is cash account debit. That is total I have written 1000 because 800 rupees that is the amount of loan and 200 rupees that is the amount of interest. Okay. So cash account debit 1000 to Bharat's loan account credit that is 800 to interest on loan account credit that is rupees 200. Okay. Because interest on loan here it is an income. Credit what? Uh, sorry, uh, credit all incomes and gains. As per the rule of nominal account, if there is any kind of income, it will always be credited. So your yeah, interest on loan has been credited. Okay, and cash account debit because debit what comes in. So cash comes in that is eight hundred plus two hundred total that is one thousand. Okay, so all the journal entries will be related on the basis of rules of debit and credit that I already explained to you in chapter number two of all the three types of accounts okay next one uh, eighth transaction what would be the narration now being the uh, Bharat's loan uh, he has returned the amount that is 800 plus 200 interest so being the amount of rupees 800 including interest including interest received from Bharat okay so you can write the narration in your own words next transaction is on 10th date Rupees 5000 returned back to Sita for borrowed loan and paid interest rupees 400. Rupees 5000 returned back to Sita. Previously, we had borrowed loan from Sita. Now, due to uh, less requirement of funds, we are returning some amount of loan to back to Sita. So, 5000, whatever we are, uh, whatever we had borrowed the loan from Sita, out of that 5000, we are returning back to Sita. And interest amount that is rupees 400. Okay. So, because of giving back the amount of loan, cash goes out from the firm and Sita is the receiver of that amount. Okay, so you can see the next entry that is 10th date, Sita's loan account debit because Sita is the receiver. So as per the rule of personal account debit, the receiver. So Sita's loan account debit that is 5000 interest on loan account debit because your interest on loan is an expense. Previously, in uh, the previous transaction, interest on loan was an income. So it was credited and here it is an expense because we are paying to Sita loan amount including interest so over here interest on loan is an expense so debit all expenses and losses as per the rule of nominal account so sita's loan account debit 5000 interest on loan account debit 400 to cash account credit that is 5400 because as per the rule of real account credit what goes out so over here we are paying the cash so cash goes out of the business okay and after what would be the narration this transaction that is being the amount of loan including interest paid to Sita. Okay. Next that is 12th day. The transaction is received interest rupees 200 for loan lent to Kaushal. We have received interest. Okay. So cash comes in and interest on loan is an income over here. So credit all incomes and gains. You can see 12th date the transaction return I have written. That is cash account debit. That is 200 rupees of interest on loan has been received from Kaushal. So cash account debit that is 200 to interest on loan account credit that is 200. Because interest Interest on loan is an income over here, so credit all incomes and gains and cash comes in, so debit what comes in as per the rule of real account. What would come the narration? That is being the interest on loan received from caution. Okay, next one that is 15th date, interest for one month paid for loan obtained from Ram. Okay, now interest for one month, you can verify the first transaction that is we had uh, borrowed loan from Ram at, uh, of rupees 20,000 at 12% 12 rate of interest. Now we are paying the interest of one month to Ram. Okay, so we have to count the interest that is for 20,000 loan. 12% you will count, then it will come to 2 2500. This 2500 is for entire year. We are paying the interest for only one year. So divide so for only one month. So divide by 12, it would come to 200. Okay, so one month interest that we are paying to Ram. So you can verify the entry that is uh, on 15th day that is interest on loan account debit to cash account credit by rupees 200 because your interest on loan we are paying. So it is an expense for us. So debit all expenses and losses. 
interest on loan account debit and that much amount of cash goes out from the firm for paying the interest so cash goes out so credit what goes out so interest on loan account debit 200 to cash account credit 200 this amount is not clearly mentioned <coughs> in the transaction but we have to find it out on the basis of the first transaction okay now after completing 15th the last entry that is 18th date rupees 75 became became receivable for interest on loan of Lakshman. Now this is receivable. Still the amount is not received from Lakshman as per the interest. Okay. So you can see entry that I have written that is Lakshman's account debit. I have not written cash account because it is still receivable. Still it has not been received by the owner of the business. So still that amount is due from Lakshman. So I have written Lakshman's account debit to interest on loan account credit because interest on loan is an income in future will receive that amount from Lakshman. So interest on loan is an income for year, income over year. So credit all incomes and gains. So interest on loan account credit that is rupees 75. What would come the narration in the last journal entry? That is being interest on loan receivable from Lakshman. Okay. So in one line, always starting with the word being. Okay. Now after completing all the journal entries, we have to do the total of the debit and credit side. You can see the total of both the side will always come equal. That is 30. 34,875 and credit side also total that is 34,875. So in this way you have to write the journal entries. Next moving on to question number 8 of your textbook that is uh, transactions of bank. It means this entire sum the transactions related to bank will be uh, in all the journal entries. All the transactions are related to bank related transactions. Okay and if you want to verify or uh, check the any of the illustrations related to it then you can verify illustration number six of your textbook that is similar to question number eight of your textbook okay so let us start with question number eight all right journal entry for krishna for the following transaction i have not written the heading over here you have to write journal of krishna okay first of all the heading as i have written over here journal of pushkar in the same way heading should be written that is journal of krishna then afterwards the format you are going same format date particulars lf number debit and credit okay now starting with the first entry that is always i told that is year and month should be written only in the first transaction and then afterwards you have to just write the dates so the uh, transactions of march 2014 first date transaction that we are starting with let us read the transaction first date of march the transaction is rupees 20000 deposited with bank and opened bank account uh, okay now rupees 20000 is uh, deposited in the bank so bank our bank account will increase our bank balance will increase so bank is the receiver so bank account debit and that much amount of cash goes out from the business so cash goes out so cash account will be credited Okay, so you can see the first journal entry that I have written bank account debit 20,000 to cash account credit that is rupees 20,000. Okay, it means bank is the receiver as per the rule of personal account debit the receiver and cash goes out from the firm. So as per the rule of real account credit what goes out. Now what would be the narration in this transaction that is being cash deposited in bank to open bank account. Okay. Next one that is fifth transaction. Uh, a check of rupees 5000 received from Hari which immediately deposited with bank. Now check we have received from Hari and check that we have deposited in bank so as to encash that much amount from the bank. Okay. So we have received the check from Hari. So Hari is the giver of the check and our bank balance would increase by rupees 5000 when we go to deposit that check in the our bank account. So our bank balance will increase. So bank is the receiver. We have to always look from point of view of ours that is from the business point of view. Okay. So bank is the receiver. So bank balance will increase debit the receiver. So bank account that will be debited. Bank account debit to Hari's account credit that is by rupees 5000. Now Hari is the giver of that check. So credit the giver as per the rule of personal account. Now what would come the narration on fifth day that is being check received from Hari deposited in bank. Okay. Next one that is sixth day. 
a check of rupees 2000 received from ramnik ramnik lal for dues a check is received from ramnik lal previously that amount was due from ramnik lal and now on this date particular date that is sixth day he is paying that amount okay and that is 2000 we have received the check not cash okay so our bank balance will increase by rupees 2000 so bank balance will increase so debit the receiver bank account debit that is two rupees 2000 to ramani class account credit that is rupees 2000 because ramani class is the giver of that check so credit the giver okay so bank account because debit the receiver bank balance will increase so bank account debit to ramani class account credit that is rupees 2000 what would come the next that is being uh, 2000 being dues received from Ramanik Lal. You can you don't need to write the amount, you can just write in one sentence that is being dues received from Ramanik Lal. Okay, in check. Next one after completing sixth transaction, sixth date transaction, next transaction that is on tenth date. Goods sold to Rupali rupees 14,000 out of which check received for half amount which deposited with bank. Now we have sold goods to one person that is Rupali and uh, in, in return of that uh, she has paid half of the amount out of the total goods sold that is 14,000 of that half amount is received in check. It means 7,000 worth of check that you have received and remaining 7,000 is still not received from the customer that is Rupali. So data relation would arise over here. Okay, so half transaction is cash and half is credit transaction. Okay. So you can see the journal entry that I have written. Bank balance would increase by rupees 7,000 because half check has been received. Half amount check has been received. That is 7,000 worth of check that you have received. So bank balance would increase by rupees 7,000. Debit the receiver. So bank account debit that is 7,000. Rupali's account debit that is 7,000 because Rupali is a data. Still 7,000 amount of uh, cash is to be received from Rupali. It is a credit transaction. So your party's name or customer's name is to be written. Okay. So Rupali's account debit that is 7,000. Two sales account credit that is 14,000. Overall we have sold the goods of rupees 14,000 out of which half is cash transaction and half is credit transaction for half cash transaction check we had received so bank account has been debited and half that is credit transaction so particular uh, customers account will be debited that is rupali's account debit okay now what would be the narration over here being goods sold uh, and half amount received by check okay so it is easily understood half amount is received and half amount is not received it means half it is credit and half it is cash transaction okay Next one that is on 12th date. Goods of rupees 10,000 purchased from Dipkala and paid half amount by check. Now over here previous transaction we have sold the goods. Now over here we have purchased the goods from Dipkala and we have paid half amount by check. What is the total amount of goods that we have purchased? That is 10,000 worth of goods. Out of that half amount that we have paid by check that is rupees 5,000. Okay. Now whenever sales account, whenever we have sold the goods, then always <coughs> sales account will be credited and if we have purchased the goods then purchase account will always be debited okay so you can see the journal entry that i have written purchase account debit that is 10,000 to bank account credit because we have paid the check of rupees 5,000 to Dipkala's account credit that is 5,000 because we still we have to pay rupees 5,000 to Dipkala. So over here Dipkala is the creditor for the business. In future we have to pay that much amount of money to Dipkala that is rupees 5,000. So half is also over here cash transaction and half is credit transaction. Okay. So again revising purchase will always be debited and sales will always be credited because due to purchase goods comes in as per the rule of real account goods or assets comes in debit what comes in. Okay, so purchase account will be debited by rupees 10,000. Total we have purchased goods of rupees 10,000. To bank account credit because due to purchase we have to make the payment. So half of the payment that we have made by check. So our bank balance will be reduced by rupees 5,000. So to bank account credit that is rupees 5,000. To Dipkala's account credit that is rupees 5,000 because 
Dipkala will become creditor for rupees 5000. Still that amount of 5000 is to be paid to Dipkala. So it is a credit transaction. Half cash and half credit transaction. Okay. So what would come the narration 12th day? That is being goods purchased and half amount paid by check. Okay. Next one that is 15th date. Rupees 400 withdrawn from bank for personal expense aid and 800 for office expense. Okay, now two amount that we, we have withdrawn from bank. One amount that we have withdrawn for personal expense and the other amount for office purpose. Okay, so I have written the entry that is drawings account debit. Already I discussed in the previous video lecture also that whatever the personal word whenever it comes then always drawings account will be debited. Whether it may be personal, we have withdrawn the goods for personal use or cash we have withdrawn for personal use or we have withdrawn the amount from bank for personal use any of the amount or goods that we have withdrawn from the business for personal use then always drawing account will be debited okay so drawings account debited by rupees 400 cash account debit that is 800 to bank account credit that is 1200 now why i have written the word cash account and not office expense account the reason for it, over here it is said that we had withdrawn the amount from bank for office expense. But still that amount of office expense we have not paid. We have not made actually that office expense. So at present we have just withdrawn the amount from bank in the business. So cash has came in the business. Still that expense has not been made. That's why cash account has been debited and not office expense account. That question should be raised in your mind. Okay. So cash account is debited and not office expense account. Okay. So drawings account debit. 400 cash account debit that is 800 that is for office expense to bank account credit that is 1200 because due to withdrawing of the cash from the bank account bank balance will be reduced and bank is the giver so credit the giver our bank balance will be reduced okay so 15th day transaction narration would come that is being uh, cash withdrawn for personal expense and for office expense okay next one that is 18th date Life insurance premium rupees 300 and fire insurance premium rupees 450 paid by check. Already in the last video lecture, we had done one transaction that also life insurance premium had came. In that also, I had told that life insurance premium, if the word comes, then it is related to personal expense and that will always be debited to drawings account. Okay. So, over here also you can see 18th date I have written drawings account debit that is 300 that is life insurance premium. Fire insurance premium, that is one kind of expense. Regular basis, we have taken any kind of insurance, then we have to pay yearly or monthly basis the premium for it. Okay, so that is one kind of expense for the firm. Fire insurance premium account debit, that is 450 to bank account credit, that is total 300 plus 450, that is 750. Now, drawings account debit, already I discussed that drawings will always have a debit balance and capital will always have a credit balance. Fire insurance premium is an expense for the firm. So, as per the rule of nominal account, debit all expenses and losses. So, fire insurance premium account debit, that is 450 to bank account credit, that is 750. Because that much amount we have withdrawn from the bank for life insurance premium and fire insurance premium. So, our bank is the giver. So, credit the giver. That much amount of bank balance will be reduced. So, as per the rule of personal account, credit the giver. Bank is the giver over here. So, bank account has been credited. Okay. That is total of this two, 300 plus 450, that is 750. What would come the narration? That is being life insurance premium and fire insurance premium paid by check. Okay. After completing 18th day, next one that is 20th. 20th day transaction is bank has approved overdraft of rupees 25,000. Now, what is overdraft? Students, you might have uh, came or you might be having certain type of knowledge regarding the word that is overdraft. Now, suppose you are having the bank balance of in your bank account that is of rupees 1 lakh and you require additional funds for any of your new venture of the business. So, you opt for overdraft facility. This is an extra facility provided by the bank to their, uh, uh, what to say, uh, good customers. They are providing this, this facility to their reputed customers who are having a good rapport with the bank. So, suppose the bank is providing the overdraft facility of rupees 50,000. It means instead of 1 lakh, now you can withdraw 
rupees one lakh fifty thousand from the bank. Okay, so even though you are having less balance, you can withdraw, you can get more amount of funds from the bank. That is additional rupees fifty thousand. That additional rupees fifty thousand that bank is providing, other than whatever balance you are having. So that is overdraft facility provided to its reputed customers. Okay, so here it is told in the transaction that bank has approved. That bank has given the approval for overdraft facility up to rupees twenty five thousand. Okay, so additional other than your balance, you can withdraw extra rupees twenty five thousand. Suppose seventy five thousand balance you are having in your bank account, and twenty five thousand overdraft facility is given provided by the bank. Then now you can withdraw total rupees one lakh from the bank account of your. Okay, so that twenty five thousand approval has been given by the bank. Still, that amount has not been received, or we have not withdrawn that amount of overdraft from the bank. So, no any economic transaction has taken place. So, over here, no any journal entry would come because it is becoming a non economic transaction. Okay, then afterwards, twenty fifth date. A uh, bank has credited interest of two fifty and debited bank charges of rupees hundred. Bank has credited interest of rupees two fifty. Now interest has been credited in our bank account. It means that much amount of bank balance has been increased, and a, a bank is the giver. Bank is the giver, and our bank balance will increase because of interest has been credited. Over here, interest amount is an income for the business. Okay, so you can see two different entries I have written for twenty fifth date. First one entry that I have written that is bank account debit to bank interest account credit that is two fifty. Now bank account debit why I have written? We have to look from our point of view, not from the point of view of the bank. Okay, so our point of view, our bank balance will increase by rupees two fifty. So bank is the receiver. Bank balance will increase. Our bank account will increase. So debit the receiver. So bank account debit that is rupees two fifty to bank interest because your bank interest is an income for the firm. So credit all incomes and gains as per the rule of nominal account. So to bank interest account credit that is rupees two fifty. In the narration you have to write that is being bank interest credited by bank. Okay. Next one, twenty fifth date. Also, there are two transactions of twenty fifth date and two different journal entries that you have to write. The second part of twenty fifth date that is debited bank charges of rupees hundred. Now over here, bank uh, is providing various kind of facilities to its customers. In return of this facility, bank charges certain amount of interest. So bank has debited rupees hundred for bank charges. So that amount will be deducted from our bank account. Okay, so ultimately our bank balance will be reduced. So bank is the giver. Our bank balance will be reduced. So here you can see opposite entry would come. On the twenty fifth date, you can see the entry. Second entry that is bank charges. Over here bank charges is an expense for the firm. Over here bank interest that was an income, so it was credited. Over here bank charges is an expense, so it is debited. So bank charges account debit that is rupees hundred to bank account credit that is rupees hundred because our bank balance will be reduced by rupees hundred. So credit the giver and bank charges is an expense so as per the rule of nominal account debit all expenses and losses. Okay, so what would come the narration in case of twenty fifth date second transaction that is being bank charges debited by bank. Okay. Last entry that is thirty first date. A cheque of rupees five thousand issued for foreign visit of son of owner from business. Now this five thousand cheque has been given to the son of the owner for going to foreign visit for foreign visit. Okay, so ultimately it is for personal expense of the owner. So the word drawings would come over here. So you can see drawings account debit. To bank account credit because that much amount of check has been given to his son, so that much amount of bank balance will be reduced. Bank is the giver, so credit the giver. Okay, so drawings account debit that is fifty thousand to bank account. Sorry, uh, five thousand amount is five thousand by mistake. I have written over here fifty thousand. It is five thousand over here. So bank account. 
So drawings account, debit to bank account credit that would come to 5000 and 5000. Okay, uh, now what would come the narration, the last internal entry that is being check of 5000 given for foreign visit of the owner of the, uh, for the uh, son of the owner. Okay, so in your own words, in each and every transaction, you can write the narration. But narration is compulsory to be written after each and every journal entry. Then and then only you can get full marks in any of the sum related to journal entries. After completion of all the journal entries, you have to do the total without fail of both the sides. That is, both the sides total is coming, that is 58,300 and credit total is also coming 58,300. Okay, so that's the end of the question number 8. So that's all for today's students. In the next video lecture, still we'll be continuing with the uh, exercise sums. Till then, keep practicing by, by revising the video lectures. Goodbye, stay blessed.